so in the second uh, part of the complex numbers class uh, i'm going to discuss about what is complex plane so in the first part of my class you have seen that the x axis is called the real axis for a complex number z if you say this is x plus i y or y i anything you can write and y axis as imaginary axis for z all right so in order to and the real axis and the imaginary axis they combine together like in the rectangular axis is called the z plane okay that means the complex number plane all right so we discuss about that and that sort of thing can better be defined by or can be better be seen by argand diagram okay so in this video i will also talk about uh, different form of uh, different form in which we can represent the complex number and uh, i will explain some related examples as well so now let's see about the argand diagram what is called the argand diagram means x you can see this is the real part and y is in the imaginary part so number in the real part we plot along the x axis that is called r is g and this y uh, things we plot all on the y axis that is called the ima imaginary axis for g okay so here in this case uh, let's suppose that x coordinate as x and y coordinate as y if you like you can also write a plus ib so that x coordinate will be a and y coordinate will be b so if i'm talking x and y both positive for example say up to here this is x so this coordinate is x0 in the coordinate form and on the y axis you know the x value is 0 so this is x is 0 and y value is there so if you plot this x y then what happens here you will have this point as x y if you like you can say this name it is name as p so now just join this line you will see that this is the line op represents a vector with the y component with the y component now we will we'll call that the imaginary component y and the horizontal component that is re g that is the real component as x so you can also represent g by the vector x y okay so in this way if you plot this complex number on a rectangular axis where instead of we, we call them as x axis and y axis we have now it is real axis and imaginary axis then the plane constituted by these two axes okay is uh, in fact the complex plane all right so in this way we define the complex plane now let's discuss about modulus and argument of a complex number a complex number you can take the same complex number x equal to uh, g equal to x plus i y so here you can see that this distance is x this distance is along y height is y so either you can use pythagoras theorem that uh, h squared is op square you can say that it is op square equals to you can call this name as m om square plus tm square and then op square in fact is in fact this is z so this sort of thing is z so you can call that as magnitude of z so that you have op equals to magnitude of op equals to under the root om square plus tm square and then it is uh, op if you say as a vector the magnitude of vector op means we are in fact finding magnitude of z and in that case what you can say here is that om equals to x square and tm equals to y square so magnitude of this vector in fact the complex number is now just by adding and squaring uh, the x component and the y component uh, under the square root so in this way uh, we are will be able to find the length of this complex number that means the modulus modulus in fact means 
the magnitude of the complex numbers and uh, also you can talk about the what's called the argument so let's see that this complex number g makes angle theta okay with the real axis that means the positive x axis in general then from the figure you can say that tan theta equals to you know that this is p by b all right and p by b means p is here y and b is here x b means om so x in fact theta equals to tan inverse if you transpose this uh, take this theta tan to another side then that's going to be y by x that means if you know the value of x and the value of y that means value of a and value of b for example then if you put these values and uh, then you will be able to find uh, the value of theta which is the angle made by g with real g okay and this theta here is called in fact the argument of this complex number that means when we talk about the argument that means uh, we are talking about the direction of the given complex number as for example uh, you can see that uh, to represent the complex numbers that means these are there are four complex numbers in the at this time i have taken here on a single argand diagram so what you can write here that you can say this is z1 equals to you can represent that by that by vector 2 and 3 that means along the real axis uh, the x uh, real com axis component is 2 and the ima imaginary axis component is 3 and similarly you can write z2 is 2 and negative 3 you understand that as a real component is positive and the imaginary component is negative in this case and minus 3 that means both real and imaginary components are along negative axis okay or otherwise just you can live like this no problem uh, so just to plot this point as if in the uh, normal coordinate axis so here in this case it is 2 3 somewhere so it is 2 and uh, this is 2 in the x and the 3 along the y that means along imaginary axis so this is the if you represent this number like this it's going to be z1 okay so this is g1 and this coordinate is 2 3 and similarly you can plot other complex numbers as well so here it is 2 minus 3 so first of all 2 is positive and minus 3 down to negative so it is this way so you can meet this point like this okay so this sort of number is going to be z2 where you can see this is 2 and minus 3 in the coordinate okay and then minus 2 3 is minus 2 and 3 is up here so your another complex number is like this this is z3 all right so it is uh, minus 2 3 okay and now another is minus 2 minus 3 that means both are negative here so minus 2 along the real component and minus 3 that means negative 3 along the uh, negative imaginary uh, axis so that it is minus 2 and minus 3 that means negative 2 and negative 3 is here yes so your z4 is in fact at this point it should be all straight line and then this is in fact it is z4 that you have uh, plotted here on the argon diagram and this sort of thing is minus 2 and minus 3 it doesn't matter even if you write like this minus 2 and minus 3 okay because this is the real component and this is the imaginary component so in this way we can represent the given complex numbers on a single argument diagram now uh, as we knew that theta equals to tan inverse of in this case it is uh, x y all right tan inverse of y over x and this is in fact the angle made by this z with this real axis or you can say about the positive x axis so in general uh, this theta is called the argument of the complex number z all right now we talk about what is called the principal argument so in the argument sense you can see that uh, throughout the quadrant here uh, theta should lie between 360 degrees and it should be greater equals to 
zero degree. Okay. So in this way, if you consider the value of theta, in that case, we call theta as the argument of z. Now, instead of writing the range of values for theta like this, if you consider this to be 180 degrees less than theta is less than plus 180 degrees, you know, then what you can say here that this way if you consider it's going to be 180 degrees in the positive sense and if you consider this way down to up uh, and right to left then this way it will be negative 180 degrees okay so there is only difference is that when you take the entire quadrants all the quadrants together along 0 to 360 degrees then the angle theta we find is called the argument but at the same time if you change the range of values of theta like this that means uh, negative 180 degrees to positive 180 degrees and in this situation if you express the theta in then we can say that this theta is now called principal argument okay so th there is a slight difference between principal argument uh, then in your Cambridge uh, paper 3, uh, unless otherwise stated, uh, it has suggested you to keep the argument in the sense of principal argument. Even though if you take theta in between 0 and 30 degrees, it ought to be wrong in fact, but only the thing is that you have to follow the, follow the uh, instructions that have been suggested in your paper 3, mathematics, mathematics paper 3. And this is also possible that uh, instead of writing this is in degree, instead of writing in degree, uh, in general, according to how your paper has suggested, is that you express theta in radian so that if you are talking of argument only, argument of z, in that case you can take theta between that is greater or equals to 0 radian and is less than 2 pi. That means uh, 360 degree means this is 2 pi. And if you say theta as principal argument of z and then in radian form, what you can write here, this is negative pi to positive pi. Okay. So you can express either in degree or in radian, but unless otherwise stated, better you take theta in radian. So now uh, let's do a few more examples uh, that... Uh, will make you clear about how to find the modulus and especially the argument of the given complex number. So here I am taking example A. I have three more examples over here. So it is 815 in fact. You can also express that as 815. So 815 is along the real G axis. Uh, we have 8 and along the imaginary G axis we have 15. So it is somewhere here suppose. Okay. So this value is 8 and uh, 15 and then your complex number would be like this. This is Z All right, and then you have to find the in fact you have to find the modulus of this vector Z as well as this angle Theta which is called the argument of Z. So in that case uh, This is origin. So modulus means you know that modulus of Z is under the root of X square plus Y square that is X component square plus y component square it was also possible to find uh, this sort of length by taking the distance between origin that is 0 0 and 8 feet okay anyway we can get it so here x component square this is x and this is y so we write here 8 square plus this is 15 square and then go to the calculator in the calculator uh, you'll see this value as 17 that means this length is here 17 so we uh, we found the modulus for this complex number okay now next in order to find the argument you know that argument is here theta so you can see that this is theta equals to tan inverse of y by x and then here this is tan inverse of your y component is 15 and the uh, y component that means the imaginary component is 15 and the real component is 8. Now, again go to the calculator and in the calculator you will see that 
this value is closely equal to 1.08 C stands for radian. So here, or also up to the three significant decimal, you can express up to like this also, but up to two is fine. So this is radian. So in this way, we found the argument of this. Now we don't know what we are going to do in this case is this is theta is less either less than 30 uh, less than 2 pi or is bigger than and 0 or we don't know what we did here is that this is less than 0 0.2 pi and bigger than negative pi so if you consider this theta to be alpha for example if you are if you are considering the all four quadrant that means we have used this sort of range of value for theta but if you are taking positive 100 axis that is in the uh, anti clockwise direction then in the in, in, then in the clockwise direction that is negative pi so this way if you are taking the range of value of theta that means this sort of theta is in fact principal argument for z so instead of writing theta what you can now write it, it as argument of z that in fact itself is theta is this way all right so let's have uh, three more parts for this sort of uh, given complex number now another time uh, we see in example b the complex number is instead of it was plus 8 now it is uh, minus 8 so g equals to minus 8 plus 15 i and in the vector form you can write like this so if you plot on this uh, complex plane then what you can get it is that negative x is somewhere here and 15 is positive so it is somewhere here and then your complex number you can represent like this okay so in this case it represents your z as minus 8 plus 15 i okay now we are to find the modulus so modulus in fact we will get this is uh, negative 8 and then this is 15 so modulus in fact will get the same like you call it as z again or g1 g2 you can, as you like you can name the complex numbers so it is under root of uh, negative 8 square plus 15 square and this value is again you can go to the calculator you can check over there is that this is 17 now let's find this angle okay so actually the argument is this this angle is theta okay so instead of finding uh, you know this angle directly what we do actually first we find this sort of angle yes let's call this as alpha and you know that this distance is now negative 8 because it is towards left from this origin okay and this height is in fact 15 so in this triangle if you say alpha equals to alpha equals to uh, tan inverse of in fact it is negative 8 no it is uh, 15 over that is uh, p by b p is 15 and the b is negative 8 but we don't write here negative 8 because we are finding this value absolutely. So at this time, the direction of alpha at this time is uh, not important because we will uh, we'll get theta um, um, based on the absolute value for this angle. So even though this is negative sign, we remove this because we require the value of alpha without having uh, taken the consideration of direction of alpha at this point at this time so if you go to the calculator that is the same value uh, that is 15 by 8 is still it is 1.08 this is 1.08 radian okay so therefore argument of z that means this z is now in fact this is theta is actually you require this angle and this angle you can say that as pi minus so from here to here 180 degree in the positive sense and minus this angle alpha is 1.08 radian and finally if you go again to the calculator you will see that value as 2.06 or you can write also or 2.061 if you would like to round up this value up to 3 significant decimal otherwise up to here is fine so in this way we found that many radian for the argument of the argument of this given complex number so at this point if you consider this sort of range of value of uh, theta and also this 
you can't distinguish here that which one is argument and which one is especially the principal argument so for the previous previous case and now we can say uh, you can see, uh, see that we have taken alpha by general way from the first quadrant to say second quadrant and this is not obvious that whether this is only the argument or principal argument okay so whether you call this as argument or principal argument both will be the same at this point irrespective of the range of values of theta given given in this angle okay as argument that is uh, theta when theta is between 360 degrees 0 degrees and 360 degrees it's okay now as this is, this is in the third quadrant and if you are taking a uh, value of theta as uh, less than uh, pi and less than pi and bigger than negative pi that means in this case we are taking the principal argument of g okay so uh, let's talk about both at this time so here in this case uh, now consider this triangle and this is 90 degree suppose that and this angle as alpha all right so first i will talk about the principal uh, principal argument okay alpha so here up to here is it is negative 8 and down to here is it is negative 15 and for this alpha negative 15 is uh, perpendicular and negative 8 is the base so in this case uh, if you find alpha equals to it is tan inverse of uh, p by b so p is negative 15 so we don't write negative or positive because we require the absolute uh, magnitude of this uh, alpha at this time so we, we don't consider the, the algebraic sign over here so it's going to be p value is 15 and the b value is 8 at this point and then go to the calculator i think yeah, still it is 1.08 radian now actually we require theta theta this way or this way for example if you consider your theta as this way for example theta is this way for example this is called the principal argument why so let's see here that so therefore in this case your theta equals to you can see that from here till here is 180 degree that is pi okay that is pi and then if you deduct this angle alpha in that case you will have value of this theta okay in in this dark color okay and uh, now you know that this way anti-clockwise direction if you consider theta or any angle to be positive then along the clockwise direction this is negative so this whole thing is going to be here minus okay negative now this is minus and pi value and then minus this angle is 1.08 whole thing is in uh, is in uh, radian now again go to the calculator or otherwise you can see this value is minus 2.0 what i got in my calculator is that this is 0 6 1 okay and this is the answer so in this case the value of theta you calculated in the range of values of theta between negative pi to positive pi okay so in this case we call this as principal argument of z why because of only theta is between because only this fact is that theta is between negative pi to positive pi now let's consider that this is also possible that if you consider uh, about the whole uh, whole quadrant all four quadrants along this is 0 to 360 degrees then what we have actually this theta value we have is now it is 1.08 so what you can do here that in general argument of z okay argument of z is in fact it is 360 degrees 2 pi minus uh, this angle alpha that we have found that as 1.08 radian so you write here 1.08 radian and then calculate this in the calculator you will see that 
this is 4.22 radian so here this answer and this answer both the answers will be correct because if you say this is the argument then if you consider all four quadrants then uh, position of the uh, of this uh, complex number number is complex uh, number line is in fact at this position and even if you consider this sort of thing that means about below of this reg if you reach uh, about the angle theta equal to negative 2.061 that in the negative direction then we are again at the same position so either you get the argument by using this sort of range of value of theta or this sort of uh, range of value of theta in Cambridge A level paper 3 uh, has taken uh, the value of theta as peaceful value so in most of the places you have to use this sort of range of values of lastly now uh, for this example now see for this uh, complex number I have only changed the algebraic like sign over here so if you plot this it's going to be this is positive eight towards here and negative uh, along the y-axis that means along the imaginary axis this is negative so it is somewhere here so it is eight and then this is minus 15 this, this is the place and if you join this line this will be your z okay now we are interested to find the argument that means theta so here the absolute value of g is still this is 17 yes you can try it and then this angle is either theta or you can say that this angle has either theta so in general let's suppose that this angle is alpha without taking uh, consideration of any direction so here you can see that tan alpha is again it is minus 15 but we take that as positive yes so we write here alpha equals to tan inverse of uh, tan inverse of 15 over 8 and again this value is uh, 1.08 radian now let's talk about the argument and the principal argument principal argument that means we consider like this yes so this way if theta is positive then in in the clockwise direction theta is negative so here for the principal argument to be theta between uh, negative positive pi what we have seen uh, uh, here is that theta equals to minus alpha yes this way in the anti-clockwise positive the, then along the y uh, along the clockwise this is negative so theta equal to minus alpha and then alpha value you can put here that it is 1.08 radian that is negative 1.08 radian so here the principal argument of z is this or in general if you would like to find just the argument in general about start from theta equal to 0 degree till uh, 2 pi then argument of z in this case what you can do here is that up to here 1 pi then another pi this is 2 pi and minus 1.08 minus means this angle is 1.08 without taking the consideration of direction for alpha itself okay now you calculate this in the calculator you will see that this value as 5.2 radian and this is the answer okay so this is the peaceful uh, peaceful argument and this is the argument in general so unless otherwise stated uh, we need to find the principal argument in fact okay let's now see discuss about the rep representation of complex numbers in different forms usually the complex numbers are represented in cartesian form modulus argument form and exponential form that is also called uh, polar form sometimes uh, modulus argument form that involves trigonometry are also called the um, complex numbers of uh, complex numbers are in modulus argument form and cartesian form means in general we had seen earlier that this is z equals to x plus yi for example and we found this is modulus z as under the root x square plus y square and also we found the argument for arg for z equals to it was theta and then it was in general it was tan inverse of uh, y by x okay 
Now it depends whether you give argument as principal argument or the argument in general. So here in this paper, we keep Z as the principal argument. So, and this sort of length you can also represent by R. That means that if you rotate this line about origin, for example, at the center, then it will form a circle of a radius uh, equals to uh, modulus G, which is R, all right? So this way, if you represent the complex number, so that sort of form of representing the complex number is called, uh, the complex number is in Cartesian form. Now, here we are taking the modulus and argument form. So here, the, the modulus and argument form will use, that means we can say using trigonometry, all right? Trigonometry. Okay. So using trigonometry means, uh, if you look at here in this figure, uh, so in this figure, you can see that you have to find the value of X coordinate and value of Y coordinate in terms of trigonometrical ratios, sine, cosine, and or tan, okay? So here, in this case, if you check here that, uh, suppose this is M, which is the foot of the perpendicular here. So if I'm taking cos theta, for example, here, this is cos theta, and you know that cos theta is, B by, uh, B by H, and here B is going to be, uh, B means it is OM, and OM equals to X, so you can directly write here X, and H, you can see that we have just found that, uh, that is modulus of Z, this length is OP is H, and that can be represented by R, R, so what you have got actually that, X equals to R cos theta. So in the X, uh, in place of X, you can write, r cos theta. That means the x coordinate is r cos theta. And uh, here uh, we require y also. So work for y now. So you know that sine theta equals to p by h. So in place of p, you can see that this is the perpendicular length and uh, this is equal to y, that height is equal to y. So we can write in place of p, y, and h is still r. That means uh, y coordinate you got is here, r sine theta. That means uh, y coordinate of uh, this point p is, in fact, this is r sine theta. So note that in place of x coordinate, we have got r cos theta, and in place of uh, y coordinate, we have got r sine theta. And now, uh, in the same complex number here, you can check like we have z equals to x plus y i or i y, anything you can write, you can write i y also, okay? And uh, here you have got x coordinate as r cos theta. So in place of x, you put r cos theta and plus uh, in place of this is i and in place of y you can put here the y coordinate as y sine theta and then uh, yes no no this is not y this is r sine theta okay so you can see here r is common from both the sides so you can write here uh, cos theta plus i sine theta. So this is the representation of complex number in modulus argument form that involves trigonometry, all right? So here, if you talk about the modulus of Z, in fact, modulus of G uh, at this uh, part, so modulus of G means you can see that this is under the root X square plus Y square, okay? That we have uh, uh, seen here. So let's check what happens here. Like in place of x squared, you can write, if you put a squared for a while, for example, so in place of uh, x squared, you can write x squared means OM and y squared means PM and by Pythagoras theorem or otherwise also you can take distance between zero 
uh, uh, origin to this point P, and then you will get uh, in place of X squared as, uh, and you know that cos squared theta and sine squared theta is plus sine squared theta is one. So therefore we can say that the modulus for this complex number is equal to R. So you can see the square from both the sides and taking the positive direction at this time. So uh, therefore you can say that the modulus of G is R and why we represent this R because if you suppose this as center of a circle with radius OP, then if you rotate over that point, this line, then there will be a circle and therefore R is the radius of that circle, okay? So in general, the magnitude of G is R. So if this way, if you represent the complex number, and that is called the modulus argument form. So, uh, sometimes it is also called polar form because we have represented this in terms of R and theta. And next one, you can see that this is uh, exponential form. So in order to go through this exponential form, uh, you can go to the, go to my class video that I have already published here. And I will also, uh, drop the link for this exponential form that is also called the polar form in the description box so that you can approach uh, that video so let me uh, tell you in general that in the third form is the exponential form so you know that the uh, exponential form of repeating the complex number is z equals to r e i theta and here e i theta is in fact, it is cos theta plus i sine theta, and this is called Euler's number. This is called Euler's number or Euler's formula also. You can also call that as Euler's formula. So you can find the detail of this Euler formula within my channel. So in this way, uh, we, can uh, we have represented uh, the complex number in three different forms. Now, let's do a few examples. So here, I'm taking two examples in order to express those complex numbers uh, in the form uh, modulus argument as well as in the exponential or polar form that is also called the Euler's form of the complex numbers. So here in this case, you require the value of R, you can see in the modulus argument form that involves trigonometry. So you know that in fact, R is the modulus of Z and modulus of Z is found as under the root X component square plus Y component square and in place of X component for this, you can see uh, I'm working for you. So here it's coordinates are six and negative three. Okay. So it is uh, six square You can write this as six square and plus this is minus three square. And once you calculate it, you'll find that value as three root five. Now we require theta, that means the argument of this complex number uh, I'm working with u equals to six minus three i. So let's see here that six means somewhere along the positive axis. This is real axis for z, and this is the imaginary axis for z in this case g means here this is u so 6 minus 3 means you have here 6 is somewhere here and uh, minus 3 that means the imaginary component is negative here so that point must be somewhere here so here this coordinate of this point is 6 and negative 3 so when you join this complex number all the way like this till this point and then you'll see that, yes, uh, this is vector u and where 
from here till here is it is six unit and the depth in this case is you can say this is negative three unit and the argument of this complex will be given by this angle and if you say this angle in this direction that is in the along the clockwise direction then if this is the argument argument must be the negative value of that angle okay so therefore uh, argument of u in this case is uh, theta you can say or and that is equals to negative alpha because the angle is in a clockwise direction and in fact in in this case uh, we are finding the principal argument so we take the range of values of theta between negative pi to positive pi so here it is minus and that alpha means it is tan inverse of those two values here the b by h uh, p by uh, p by b so p means it is negative three that means we take that as in absolute form so it is three and then uh, this b value is six uh, for that triangle if you consider an argument for uh, this complex number is now uh, from calculator uh, you will be able to find in the radian mode is that this value of argument is 0 0.464 up to 3 up to 3 decimal places okay and now we can see here that we have obtained the value of r and also the value of uh, argument of uh, u that and r as the you can say in this case r in fact is it is u modulus of u okay so g we support that in general so here in this case now therefore you can write uh, u equals to 6 minus 3i in the form of modulus and argument form that contains trigonometry is r actually this is r cos theta plus i sin theta and then that is going to be equal to r means here you can just put 3 root 5 and then it is cos theta is it is negative 0 0.464 and then plus i sine negative 0 0.464 okay so in this way uh, we have reprinted the given complex number which is in cartesian form that is u equals to 6 minus 3i in uh, in terms of modulus and argument form and if you talk about uh, in the exponential form for example uh, for this given uh, complex number u equals to 6 minus 3i so what you can write here that it was your question number one for this question and in second in second you have u equals to you can see that the uh, uh, formula for the complex number in the Euler's form or in the exponential form, we can say it is r e to the power i theta, where theta is the argument of this complex number u. So we already have here now the value 3 root 5. So in place of r, we write here 3 root 5, but only the difference is that instead of writing cosine and sine, we write here e to the power i and the value of theta as it is, uh, you can see here the same value of theta. So it is minus 0 0.464. So in fact, this is 3 root 5 e to the power negative i and then 0 0.464. And this is also possible that first you write the real values like this. It is 0 0.064 and then i. And this is the answer. So we expressed u equals to 6 minus 3i in the exponential form and also in the modulus argument form as well as in the exponential form. Now let's do for another complex number the same work. 
uh, and this complex number is W equals to minus seven plus five I. That is negative seven plus five I. So here uh, we are doing the same work. That means we are writing this W in the in modulus and argument form. So here we require, like you can see here, G equal to R. So we require the value of R and the value of theta. So here in this case, value of R is going to be x component is negative seven. So we write here negative seven square and then plus it is five square. And once you calculate the, this, it's going to be under root of 74. Now in order to find this principal argument for this complex number W. So if you go to the argon diagram, in the argon diagram, you see that negative C is towards left along the real G. And this is the imaginary Z. So in this case, you can say this is real W and this is the imaginary W here. So negative seven step uh, here to the le left from this zero. And then plus, you can see here five along the imaginary axis. So your complex number line, that means on the argon diagram, your, your line will be like this. So this vector line is for the complex number W. And here the coordinate of this point will be negative seven and five, all right? So here you can see that up to here is negative seven, yes? And then the height is five over here. And you suppose that argument, argument means you in general, we measure the angle from the real axis about the real axis. Uh, if you say only the argument, then about the positive real axis. Otherwise, in the principal argument, you measure this either from zero to pi or negative pi to zero, okay? So we are taking the principal argument in this case. So say this angle as theta and this angle as alpha, we require the value of alpha in the absolute sense. So here in this case, uh, you can say that ARG of W, that means argument of W is that theta, yes. And this theta you can see in the first two quadrant that up to here from start from zero till here is pi and then minus this angle alpha equals to pi. And you know that alpha is tan inverse of this sort of thing. You can take tan alpha equal to P by B, and then you can find alpha in, in the form of tan inverse of P by B. So tan inverse of P by B, here you can see that perpendicular is five and its base is negative seven, but we write here only seven because uh, we are taking this amount of this angle only, but the theta will be uh, measured from the positive real axis uh, at this time, even though this is the principal argument. And then uh, in your calculator, make sure that your calculator is in radian mode. And once you calculate this value, it's going to be uh, 2.5 to up to the correct to the three significant figures, all right? So we now have obtained both R and the argument of W. Therefore, if you'd like to convert first in terms of uh, modulus and argument form, in that case, you can write here W equals to R means here you can see, R means uh, we have found here is uh, under root 74. And then inside the bracket cos theta, so we write here cos in place of theta, theta is in radian, so this is in radian. So this is uh, 2.52 and then plus I sine theta, that means I sine of the same angle, 2.52 and this is one of the answer. And in the second case, the same complex number, you are to write in the, polar form that is also called the Euler form and also exponential form. And you know that in the exponential form, we express the complex number like this. So R times of I theta and your R value is already here. So this is 74 and then E to the power theta means we just first keep uh, real value 
and then i so theta is already here now it is 2.52 theta so in this way we can uh, present the complex number in exponential form so make sure that like we worked in one way and you should be able to work in another way also like from exponential form to modulus argument form and then to the cartesian form so this way if you represent the complex numbers or it is given then it is called in the cartesian form yes so first is the cartesian form here and this is in the modulus and argument form and the last one is the polar or exponential form or you can also call it as euler's form so in order to go from two to one what you can do here is that just to use the, this sort of thing i theta that is the euler's number it is where i theta is cos theta plus i sin theta so when you put the value of theta if it is given or or by other means we have to find the value of theta so once you put the value of theta then from this step you can go up to this step in fact you can go up to here and here when you take the value of cos for the given angle for example here 2.52 radian and similarly for the sine then you will reach to the cartesian form so this is possible that uh, you can convert the given complex number to modulus argument form and to the polar form and also from that polar form to the modulus argument form and back to the cartesian form so for your better practice uh, you can try this so here you have to write or express z equals to 3 under root 41 e to the power 2.25 i in modulus argument form and also in the cartesian form so in order to do so you can pause your video here and then do this sort of works let's now see what happens when you multiply two or more complex numbers so here in this case you start from here is that z1 times z, uh, g1 times g2 equals to when you multiply these two so you just replace uh, g1 for by this call r1 cos theta one and then plus i sine theta one and then this is times it is g2 is it is you can write here r1, r1 in the bracket it is times okay uh, cos theta two plus i sine theta two and you can multiply just like uh, as in general algebraic method but good idea is that uh, as we know uh, this sort of complex numbers uh, in the Euler form that is in the exponential form so then if you express this sort of complex numbers in the exponential form your derivation will be even easy otherwise you can just multiply them and try to get the result so what i'm doing here is that this is r1 and cos theta 1 plus i sine theta 1 you can write this as e to the power i theta 1 and then times here it is r2 this is not r1 this is uh, r2 and for this is theta 2 so you can write here e to the power i theta 2 in place of cos theta 2 plus i sine theta 2 now if you multiply all these terms it's going to be r1 times r2 and then e to the power i from the power of e you can take the common here and power and power they will be added then in the power you can see here that this is theta 1 plus theta 2 so in place of now argument of only one complex number now we have the argument of for the complete complex numbers g1 times g2 so in place of theta you have now theta 1 plus theta 2 so what, how we can write again in the modulus argument form that involves trigonometry is that it is r1 times r2 and then in place of here cos theta you can write here cos theta 1 plus theta 2 and then plus i sine 
theta 1 plus theta 2. Okay, so this way uh, we can multiply uh, a number of complex numbers together. So here I multiplied two complex number G1 and G2. What do you think about when you multiply G1 times G2 times say another complex number is G3. So in this case, you can take uh, value for argument for G3 as theta 3 then do you think that it's going to be r1 times r2 and again times r3 and in place of cos theta, uh, cos theta 1 plus theta 2 we have one more theta and that is theta 3 and then close this bracket then we have i sine of theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3. For your better practice, pause here and try whether or not when you multiply the three complex numbers, then your result will be like this. Okay, so here you can see that it is Z3 is in fact here it is uh, R3 you can say it is and then cos here for Z2 it is theta 2. So you can take this as theta 3 and then plus I sine theta 3 all right theta 3 okay and what you feel when it is g1 and g2 and g3 maybe g4 yes maybe g5 up to for example say gn in general do you think that it's going to be when you multiply all this then it's going to be r1 times r2 times r3 times r4 times so on like this how many uh, complex numbers are there and then inside the bracket we have it is cos theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 plus up to theta n so here up to you have r n if you are taking n number of complex numbers and then plus it is the position of i sine theta so you can write here theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 th theta 4 up to theta n okay so what if we discuss about the power of z okay here in this case so for example uh, i am taking z square that means i am taking z times z for the same complex number z equals to in general, this is R times cos theta plus I sine theta. Okay. So here it means we have been taking here like R cos theta plus I sine theta. And in place of another G also, there is the same complex number. So what you can write here, this is R cos theta plus I sine theta, all right? And now let's see here that this is G1 times G2 is R1 times R2. So for here, R1 and R2 both are equal. So you can write here R times R is R square, okay? And then inside the bracket, you see here that this is for G1 and G2 cos theta 1 plus theta 2. So what you can write here is that cos theta plus theta because we are talking for the same complex number twice, okay? So one complex number has angle theta, another has also theta. So we can write here theta plus theta by using this sort of result. And then plus I sine theta one plus theta in place of that, you can write here theta plus theta. And then you can see here that it is going to be r square and then it is cos 2 theta plus i sine 2 theta okay now what if you write like this for example if it is given as gq so can you write uh, just by taking this result here and also we have seen all 
all those sorts of, above here. So here you can write here r to the power three, and then it is cos. If this is power three, then this is power two, then two uh, cos two theta three, then this is cos three theta plus i sine three theta, and therefore you can say that. Therefore, you can say that. Therefore, in general, okay, what you can say that if it is g to the power of 4, then this is r to the power of 4 in place of 3, there is 4 and 4 over here. If 5, then 5. Okay, so therefore, in general, for any number n, okay, what you can write is here is that g to the power n equals to r to the power n and cos n theta plus i sine i sine n theta you can say by induction also all right and in this way you can write you can express the powers of complex numbers like this okay so this is in the modulus and argument form and for example if you'd uh, like to write the same sort of thing in the exponential form, the same thing you, you can write in the exponential form is that it is r to the power n, that means g to the power n equal r to the power n, and then e to the power i n theta, yes, i n theta or n theta i, anything you can write here. Okay, so this way we can express the power of the given complex number. So here in this case, g equal to given as r cos theta plus i sine theta. Yes. So the formula that we saw here in this case is in fact is called D Moivers theorem. Okay, this sort of thing is called D Moivers theorem because this sort of work was first done by D Moivers and therefore this is called the D Moivers theorem. And now uh, let's discuss about some important sort of thing that you have, you need to try yourself. So what you can do in this case, some important note is that you take some example of Z maybe, and then W maybe like this, uh, two plus three I maybe, and this is uh, two minus I for example, then you have to check that whether or not modulus of z over w equals to modulus of w sorry uh, equals to modulus of z and then divided by modulus of w okay so first of all uh, we divide g by w and then find the value of modulus of g over w and then uh, you separately take the modulus of g and modulus of w and divide them and then see whether or not uh, these two results are equal. If these two results you, you found are equal, that means you have to note this sort of situation. And also you can try for the same complex number, maybe like g times w equals to z modulus of z and then modulus of w, all right? And uh, in the next class, uh, we'll discuss about solving equations that involve complex numbers. Uh, and uh, in that, we'll also see finding square roots of complex numbers and the cube roots of one that is also called the cube roots of unity. So this is all for now and uh, thanking you all for watching this class video.